So when we start talking about cutting metal, especially the processes that can be used, there are many different processes. There's water jet, there's laser cutting, there's plasma cutting, there's oxy fuel cutting or uh, torch cutting, and there's also electro cutting. To pick up where a couple of my previous videos end off using oxy fuel, we have our standard oxy fuel setup. We have our acetylene, which is our fuel gas, our oxygen, which also provides the cutting pressure, and then we have our cutting torch. Now that's one way, uh, that's one process to do it manually, but there are other processes that we can utilize while still maintaining the oxy fuel setup and cut our metal a little bit more uh, efficiently. Just depends on the cuts that we're trying to make. So one of the other processes that we can use is a semi-automatic process and it's utilizing a track cutter. It utilizes this machine which runs along a track uh, to cut the material. So let me zoom out a little bit. So again, we have this machine that runs along a track. It is motor driven. So there are some controls in here that are going to tell it either to run away in this direction or run this direction there are also controls on here that are going to tell the motor how fast to run which is of course going to change our travel speed and also how slow now you'll see a couple of lines running up connecting to the machine okay so these are the lines that are supplying our fuel gas and our oxygen so this still utilizes oxygen and a fuel gas. Now we also have the torch on this end. So I'll go ahead and I'll scoot the camera over to get a better glimpse of that. So this is our torch right here. We've got a couple of adjustment knobs. One is for the fuel gas one is for oxygen and we also have this lever right here which essentially is the cutting pressure for oxygen so we're going to have two uh two locations where we can control the flow of oxygen and one to control the fuel gas now you see a few other knobs here this knob extends or retracts the torch Okay, this one back here is going to control the angle at which the torch points. And then we also have this third adjustment knob which controls the depth of the torch. Now every track cutter of course is built a little differently. This just happens to be the way that our track cutter is put together and uh, functions with the cutting torch. Now before we actually start cutting, let's go over some, some uh, PPE and some tools that we might need uh, for cutting operations. So the first thing we're going to want, of course, are gloves, okay? I've got light duty gloves on, that's okay for handling material back and forth uh, before it's been cut and before it picks up a temperature. So while you're actually cutting, it's probably going to be more beneficial for you to have some thicker welding gloves. That way you don't burn yourself while you're trying to pick up material. 
It's also going to pay to have some pliers, some slip joint pliers or vice grips, whichever you might have handy. But let's try to stay with these two tools. All right, you're also going to want a decent pair of eye protection. So when you're cutting, it's okay to use clear safety glasses to a point. You're going to want to have shaded safety glasses. So same thing like when we were utilizing the handheld cutting torch, you're going to want something with a shade 5 lens. So you can use goggles or you can use something like these shade 5 glasses from Miller. And so if we kind of put these on the camera, you'll see that it does shade. So you can use something like this to view the cut and make any adjustments to the track cutter as needed. Now, a couple different things. You're gonna need a chipping hammer. So while we're cutting, depending on our variables, we're gonna have some dross at the bottom of our cuts. So at the bottom of our plate. And we're gonna need a way to chip off the dross. Now, if you don't have a chipping hammer, a regular hammer, and a chisel will do fine. Then of course, you're gonna need a striking tool that has a good flint tip on it. So this is to start the torch. Just in case, you're gonna need uh, some tip cleaners. So in case your tip gets dirty or it's already dirty, you've got some tip cleaners handy to clean up the tip. And you're gonna need a good ruler because whenever you're lining up your cuts, it's good to have a ruler to get your distances correct. So whatever your cut needs to be, make sure you've got a good straight ruler. That way you can mark out your distances and then draw a line straight across. Now, one thing that I should add is that the track cutter is really only good for straight cuts. So just back and forth, straight across. So if you're doing any kind of fancy cutting, drawing, uh, you know, cutting out shapes, any sort of design, the track cutter might not be for you. But this is something that we use in our shop when cutting out coupons uh, for, uh, for test plates, cutting out coupons of our test plates so that way we can put them in our machine that conducts the bend test. So it's a lot more efficient than cutting it by hand. It gives you uh, far more straighter, smoother cuts so long as you've got everything dialed in. So let me go ahead, get this plate set up, and then I'll run you over how to control the machine. All right, so when operating this particular track cutter, which is uh, manufactured by Victor, there are one, two, three controls that we are gonna utilize. The first one is over here. You can think of this as your on plus your drive switch. So right now, it's in the middle. We can either flip it up or we can flip it in the middle. We can flip it down. Now, someone has gone ahead and drawn on the side what the different positions mean. So in the middle, you're essentially in neutral or the letter N. Now R is for reverse. So if we wanted this running back, we would simply flip it down and when we release the track cutter or put it in drive mode it's going to start going in reverse and if we flip it up it's in drive again when we put the track cutter in drive mode it's going to drive forward so how do we get it to drive and how do we kind of shut it off so that is this switch right here so you might not be able to see it after years and years of, of use. These face plates have kind of rubbed off. So this is going to be our drive switch. So here you might be able to barely see it. It says drive. Down here says free. So right now this is in the free position. You can think of it as like free motion. I can move it back and forth simply by just using my hand. Now, if this were to be in the up position, that is drive. So whatever we have it switched in, it's going to go that direction. It's important, though, that you tell it what direction to go first. 
listen for the motor, you'll hear a nice uh, humming sound, and then flip it up and watch it go forward. Now, right now it's at a slow speed. Let's say that you've waited the, the length of the cut. It's done cutting. How do we get it to stop? We simply bring this back down and it's back in free motion. Make sure that you switch this back into neutral when you're done. Otherwise, you're taking a chance at overworking the motor and possibly burning it out. Now, just the reverse, if you wanted to switch this back, you're gonna see it start to come this way. Now, what does this knob do? So, you might not be able to see it, but there is low and there's high. So by spinning it clockwise, we are slowing down the speed versus if we spin it counterclockwise, we are going to uh, increase our speed. So clockwise, we're lowering or decreasing the speed. Counterclockwise, we are increasing the speed. Now it's always good to test your settings before you actually go in to make your official cut. So I've got this plate of steel here with a couple of lines that I intend to cut. We're gonna go ahead and use this first cut to kind of dial in our settings. Um, and then we're going to use the second cut as sort of like a verification. So as I said earlier, this is a great method for cutting coupons out of uh, projects that you're intending to, to bend test for quality inspection purposes. So the first thing is we're gonna line the torch up with this line. We're gonna make sure that we are cutting straight across. All right, once that happens, we'll go ahead, bring it over here, and we'll start messing with the gases. Okay, so we have this knob and we have this knob. So you can trace it back to whichever line is hooked up to it. So we have green as our oxygen. Red is our fuel gas. We're gonna find the fuel gas. We are going to crack our acetylene, so just about a quarter turn. Take our striker, strike our flame. Now we're going to adjust the flame. All right, now we're gonna add our oxygen. Now this is our cutting pressure. Or up. 